Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, we'll be creating a timeout command that will make use of Discord's built-in timeout feature. However, if you notice inside Discord, the maximum time that you can timeout someone for is one week. This also applies to their built-in slash command. We have a predefined set of time that we can use, so there's not a lot of flexibility. With our bots, we'll allow users to timeout for a minimum of five seconds and a maximum of 28 days. So it's a lot more than what Discord has to offer. Now, before we start, if you're interested in this folder structure where you have your commands and events inside their own files and folders, then be sure to check my advanced command handler video, which I'll have linked down in the description. Let's start by creating a file inside our moderation folder called timeout.js. This will, as usual, export an object which will first have the name property, which will set to timeouts. We're also going to have a description, which will set to timeout a user. The next thing is options. Now we're going to have three options, one for the target user, the second for the duration, and the third for the reason. So let's start with the target user. This option is going to have a name of target user. We're going to set the description to the user you want to timeouts. The type is going to be a mentionable, but in order to use that, we're going to have to import something from Discord JS. So let's say const require Discord JS and let's import something called application command option type. And we can set our type to application command option type dot mentionable. Now we can duplicate this and set the name to duration. We're going to set the description to timeout duration. And we're also going to give a few examples. So stuff like 30 M for 30 minutes, one H one day, whatever human readable format that people want to write in. And of course, it's not going to be a mentionable. It is going to be a string and it's also going to be required. I also noticed that our target user is not required. So let's do that. Now, our third option is going to be the reason. And we're going to set the description to the reason for the timeouts. The type is going to be application command option type dot string as well. Now, in order to execute this command, the user running the command needs to have a few permissions. So let's say permissions required. This is going to be an array of permissions. However, to add the permissions, we're going to have to import something from Discord JS called permission flag bits. Inside of this array, we can say permission flag bits dot mute members. Of course, even the bot needs this permission, so we can just duplicate it and change this to bot permissions. Now, the next thing that we need is the callback function, which will have access to the client and interaction, but I'm not going to put the callback function down here. Instead, I'm going to put it at the complete top. It really doesn't matter. You can have it completely down here, but the reason why I have it up here is so that when I open the file, I don't have to scroll all the way down just to get to the logic. Now, before I start writing the main code, I want some IntelliSense for client and interaction. So let's go ahead and import client and interaction. This part is, by the way, completely optional. You don't have to do this. Now, before this callback function, we're going to say forward slash double asterisk and press enter. And for the first param, we're going to set this to client. And the second one is going to be interaction. So inside our callback function, if we try to say client dot on client dot, we're going to have a bunch of options, basically. So we have IntelliSense from VS Code. Now, the first thing that we want to get is this target user. So we can do that by saying const mentionable, which is going to be interaction dot options dot get. And the string is going to be target user, basically matching this name over here. And since it is required, we know for a fact the value property will exist. We can do the same for duration. So let's say const duration equals interaction dot options dot get duration dot value. Finally, we also need the reason. So let's say const reason equals interaction dot options dot get reason. However, the reason is not required, which means the value property may not exist. So we're going to use something called optional chaining. Put a question mark and put dot value. So if value does not exist, this altogether will return null. However, if it is null, we do need a default value. So let's use the or operator and set it to no reason provided. So if interaction options returns a null value, then reason will automatically equal to no reason provided. Now let's start by deferring a reply. So let's say await interaction dot defer reply. And because we're using await, 
we need to put a sync up here. Now what we want to do is get the user object that we mentioned. Basically this mentionable right here is now going to return the user object. Instead, it's going to return the user ID of the person that we mentioned. So we need the full object, which will give us access to a bunch of methods and properties. So let's say const target user equals, and we're going to say await interaction dot guild dot members dot fetch. And we're going to fetch using the mentionable. Now it's possible that a command is ran when the person left the server because discord sometimes caches the value. So let's say if not target user, then we can say await interaction dot edit reply and say that user doesn't exist in this server and make sure to return right after this. So the function does not run any further. After this, we need to check if target user is actually a bot. So let's say if target user dot user dot bot, then we can say await interaction dot edit reply. I can't time out a bot. And again, make sure to return so the function does not run any further. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to convert this duration from human readable format, basically 1D, 1D, 1S, 5S, 5M, whatever human readable format they write in to milliseconds. To do that, we're going to use a library called MS. So open up your terminal and say npm install MS and hit enter. Once the package is installed, we can import it at the top. So let's say const ms require ms. Down here, we can define a variable called ms duration, which is going to be the duration that the user passed in, but in milliseconds. So let's say ms and pass in the duration. Now, if the value that the person provided is invalid, then ms duration is automatically going to be turned into not a number. So let's check for that. So we're going to say if is not a number and we're going to pass in ms duration. We're going to reply to the user and say await interaction dot edit reply. And we're going to say, please provide a valid timeout duration. And again, we're going to return. Now we need to check if ms duration is less than five seconds or more than 28 days. So let's say if ms duration is less than 5,000, 5,000 is basically five seconds in milliseconds or MS duration is more than 28 days. Now to write 28 days in milliseconds, I'm just going to copy a value and I'm going to paste it over here. So I just Googled 28 days to milliseconds and I got this value over here. Anyway, if this is the case, we can say await interaction dot edit reply. And we're going to say timeout duration cannot be less than five seconds or more than 28 days. And then we're going to return. Finally, one thing that we're going to do is check the role positions of the target user, the request user, and our bot user. So if you've been keeping up with the series, you know, we've done that in our kick and ban command. So I'm just going to go here and copy all this code logic. Don't worry. I'll explain what this does. Just come in here and paste it and change the kick to timeout and timeout. So basically first we're defining a variable called target user role position which is going to give us the highest role of the target user, basically the user that we're mentioning in our command. The next variable is the request user role position, which gets the highest role of the user running the command. And finally, we're doing the same thing, but for our bot. With all those values, what we're going to do is we're going to compare the positions to make sure the bot and the person running the command have enough permission to actually time out the user. So we're saying if target user role position is more than or equal to the request user role position, it means that the request user does not have enough permissions. So we're just going to say you can't time out the user because they have the same or higher role than you. And then we're doing the same thing, but for our bot. Don't worry, I'm going to have all of this code in my GitHub repository so you can check it out from there as well. Finally, we can time out the user. So I'm going to add a comment here saying time out the user. For this, we're going to add a try catch block. And if there's an error, we can say console.log. There was an error when timing out. And then we're going to pass in the error. Inside the try block, what we want to first do is convert this MS duration from milliseconds to human readable format. And the way we can do that is by using a library called pretty MS. So open up your terminal and install using NPM. So let's say NPM install pretty dash MS. 
Once it is installed, we can close out of the terminal. Now we cannot import pretty MS at the top because it is a library that does not support common JS directly. So the way we're going to use that is by using the import keyword. So inside our try block, we're going to say const, we're going to destructure and say await import, and we're going to import pretty MS. Inside of this, we're going to import the default export from this library. And because default is a reserved keyword in JavaScript, we're just going to rename this to pretty MS. Now what we want to do is check if the user we're timing out is already timed out because it's possible to time out a user when they're already timed out, basically overriding their previous timeout duration. So we can say if target user dot is communication disabled, and this basically checks if the person is already timed out. If they are timed out, we're going to first time them out again. So let's say await target user dot timeouts. And the first argument we're going to pass in is the duration in milliseconds. So that's MS duration. And the second argument is going to be the reason. So reason. Now, once they are timed out, we're going to send a message. So let's say await interaction dot edit reply. And in here, we're going to say target user timeout has been updated to and we're going to take this ms duration and we're going to convert it into human readable time so let's say pretty ms and inside we're going to pass in the duration in milliseconds so ms duration and actually here's an example of how it works here's the time in milliseconds and it's going to convert it to something like this however we will format it a little better and i'm going to show you how to do that first just pass in the duration in milliseconds and now we need to pass in a second argument, which is going to be an object. This object is going to have a property called verbose, and we're going to set this to true. Now, if you check what verbose does, it basically converts the time from a short format to a much more human readable format, like 5 hours, 1 minute, 45 seconds, as opposed to 5h1m45s. So after this is done, we can just return. And outside of this if statement, we're going to time out the user again. So let's just copy this. But instead of saying that their timeout has been updated to a new timeout duration, we're just going to say that they were timed out. So let's say await interaction dot edit reply. And we're going to say target user was timed out for, and we're going to use pretty MS again. So we can just copy this. Now, what I'm thinking is also passing in the reason in a new line. So I'm going to use backslash n. I'm going to say reason and I'm going to pass in the reason. And I'm going to do the same thing for the top reply. So let's say backslash n and pass in the reason. Now let's save the file and this should technically work. So let's open up our terminal and I'm going to run my bot using nodemon. Now it says edited command here because I actually had a failed recording before this. So anyway, let's head over to Discord and let's try running the command. So I'm going to say slash timeout and I'm going to use our bots timeout command and the target user is going to be my friend's account. So I'm going to use that and the duration can be any human readable time format. So it can be 30 M for 30 minutes or you could say 30 minutes like that. And I'm not going to pass in a reason for this one. Let's just press enter and see what happens. So it says in cipher was timed out for 30 minutes reason no reason provided so if i right click on my friend's account we see there is a timeout and if i click on remove timeout we'll see it says 29 minutes 45 seconds remaining which means they were timed out for 30 minutes now i'm going to cancel this and try to time them out again but for a shorter duration let's say something like 30 seconds this time i'm also going to provide a reason which says testing this time it says in Cypher's timeout has been updated to 30 seconds. Reason testing. If I right click and I click on remove timeout, you'll see it says, well, 15 seconds because 15 seconds have passed. So anyway, this is how you create a timeout slash command using Discord's built-in timeout feature. If you guys are having any problem, be sure to join my Discord server and post your questions in code help. We have helped solve a lot of problems, so I'm pretty sure we'll be able to help you as well. If this video helped you out, make sure to give it a like. And if you guys are enjoying my content, make sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.